Hi guys, welcome back. So Wales 29, Australia 28. Now I don't really know what to make of this game except both sides were desperate to win. So let's get into it and talk about some of the talking points and you guys comment below what you thought of the game. But wow, the game starts with an absolute bang. It's Australia who were off and running with brilliant creativity. Uh, White was great all game. A lovely little chip starts it off. Then you've got the interplay. Pasami uh, was great all game. Tupo's power was brilliant. It results in a, a try for Kellaway from a nice little grubber in the end. So 0-7 straight off the bat. Brilliant stuff. And then uh, Wales get a penalty back. So 3-7, we think it's game on. Wales looking very physical, looking very strong, uh, but the creativity of Australia probably slightly better. So it's a good sign for the game. But then, oh no, we get the disaster for Australia. Valentini stays upright in the tackle. His head is straight on. You know, sometimes you get away with it, sometimes you don't. But if you do that, you run the risk. It's a nasty collision with Beard. So it is a red in today's interpretation for sure. So is that the game for Australia? At this point, you know, Wales are looking decent as well as Australia, but one man down for 65 minutes. Surely that's too much. Wales pop over the penalty from that red card. So it's 6-7, I think. Really, can they survive for that long? But of course, they get incredibly close to winning it. And the Australian attack, looks electric their interplay is very good you add in two post power and it's pretty devastating um, so they get a well-earned penalty and move ahead 6-10 Paisami continues to be on fire the whole game so impressed with him um, then it takes 20 minutes for Wales to really get their first dangerous attack a really good delayed pass from bigger you know pumps the pass fakes and they're in behind it leads to a five meter mall they move it wide then we get a slap down yellow card from Beal, which is interesting because later in the game, there's a similar one that doesn't quite go uh, for Australia, where Wales do slap the ball down, but it goes backwards. So fine margins indeed. And from that period of yellow card and a red card, so they're down to 13, a really nice try for Wales. It's a clever front peel. I think they shift the drive as well. Then a two on one back to the front. Elias goes over. Nicely done. They take the lead 13-10. Lovely when a training ground move like that comes off. But even with 13 men, Australia looked pretty good to be honest. And I'm just thinking imagine what it'd be like if they had 15, but they don't. Um, but they get a penalty. So it goes back level 13 all. Just making a note here as well, Basham and Jenkins look really good double threat at the breakdown. If I would have to pick a player of the season from those two of the Autumn Internationals from those two, I'd probably take Basham actually. He's slightly more athletic and powerful. Jenkins technically very good, but Basham just looks a bit more of an athlete. The game goes into a period of a kicking battle, but Australia a little bit handicapped with one less man, but their scrum still doing pretty well to be honest the whole game. Um, Halaholo, his attack was very good in this game. Uh, we'll get on to some more of his stuff later, but causing problems for Australia gets a penalty 16-13. And Wales looking quite good at this point. They're passing now, is making the most of the extra space. Um, pretty decent opportunity at the end of the half, but they don't score. But it's 16-13. Wales starting to get on top with an extra man. You think it's going to be too much. So the second half starts and straight away it looks like Tupo's hobbling straight out of the tunnel. In fact, he goes straight off a couple of minutes after that. So that's a massive blow for Australia. He's one of their star players and they're down to 14. And as the game goes on, just making a note here that Liam Williams just looked class through the whole game. I think, you know, there was early questions on in the autumn that maybe McNichol might take his place, who's done very well. But Liam Williams, just such a fantastic player in every aspect of the game. Um, Australia working really hard. They are working their way up the field, but it's tough going. And I just feel at this point, Wales just need to stay patient. Then we get a really weird moment that could have been disaster for Wales, but ended up being a massive bonus. Tomkins scores, but he goes for a tackle and it's obvious he's trying to block the ball with his hand as well. Um, I don't really know why players do that these days because it, invariably it goes wrong. But not this time. The ball happens to go backwards and pounces into his arms. And he scampers away looking rather embarrassed. Uh, pops the ball down. So it's a try. 
Um, Australia can't believe it, but that's just the way the ball bounces sometimes. 23-13, big 10-point lead. What a swing moment. Then things start to go wrong for Halaholo. Really bad drop off a restart. Nearly cost them, but they hold up the mall. Then a one-on-one -on -one missed tackle. Pretty bad straight against his opposite number. I think it's Ikitao. Uh, but the final pass was just forward, so he gets away with those two errors. Um, but in attack, looking good for Halaholo. Defence, high ball-wise, not so good. So mixed bag there. And Australia getting into some good territory and possession. And Wales, you know, really make it hard for themselves. Where Gareth Thomas doesn't need to clear out Alatoa, who's just lying on the floor, but he does anyway. And if you're going to clear out someone who's lying on the floor, you're probably going to make contact with his head, and he, he does. So that's a needless yellow. And at this point, Australia definitely smell blood. This is their chance. They start flying into contact with their big boppers, carrying the ball up, and a bit of Beal magic, who again goes round Halaholo. Bad miss one-on-one -on -one tackle. So that's three mistakes in a row for him. Leads to the try from White. Nice support. 23-20. The game is on. They take advantage of that yellow card for sure. Um, a nice little point here. Paisami actually creams Adams, uh, but he didn't have the ball. So that was a, a bad penalty to give away. So Wales push six points ahead. 26-20. And just making a note here that both nines, I thought, were class. White and Thomas Williams for the whole of the autumn have looked brilliant. So that's positives for those guys. And the pace is high. The teams both want to win. Still very much in this game for Australia. And then we get a, a bit of pure wallaby magic. Paisami, a searing break. What a game for him. McNichol saves a certain try, but it's whipped wide to Dungunu with a top finish. O'Connor hits the post. They don't go ahead 26-25. Then we have the situation. It's one point in it, five minutes to go, and Wales decide to run the ball from deep even though they're ahead. And friendly defence from Australia, to be fair. Big hits and Skelton gets in there. Jackals a penalty. Is this the match winner? And Bill nails a long kick. Maybe it is. 26-28. And Wales really just have a couple of minutes to work their way up the whole pitch. And they do it. Great handling, and Liam Williams is at the front of it. Just a beautiful player, knows when to pass, when not to pass, when to break blind. Just brilliant. They get to within five metres out and just know they need to stay patient and patient and patient. And probably Australia will give away a penalty. And these days, even the hands offside gives away an offside, and that's what it is. So they win 29-28. Australia are left to think what could have been with 15 men, but hey, discipline is part of the game. Wales probably should have won a bit more comfortably than they did, but they did win, so a big win for Wales. Another loss for Australia. I'd love to know what you guys thought of that game, and I'll catch you next time.